G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews, day two of the do-it-yourself helical. This one we've built yesterday, it performs very, very well, surprised me even actually, it exceeded my expectations given the laissez-faire approach taken to measurements and making sure everything's super spot on. Now, it turns out that this is about a seven and a quarter turn. I, as I say, I just got a length of wire and wound it. I didn't deliberately try and make it a seven turn. So if we go up to there, there's about another you know, third to quarter of a turn after that point. So I put some hot glue on the end there, as you can see, to basically hold the end in place. And now I put hot glue at the five turn or and the three turn interval. So we've already got a flight from yesterday showing us how the seven and a bit turn worked. So what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to snip this here and we'll try it out as a five and a bit turn. Okay, so here we go. We'll just unwind the bit we're not using. This hot glue sticks real well, actually. It's great stuff. <laughs> At least in this, so there we go. So now we have made ourselves a five and a bit turn helical. Um, so we'll go and do another flight test. And when we finish that, we'll come back and make it into a three turn. What I expect to happen here is it will get less gain. So it'll be snowier at the far end of the runway, but we should get us a wider beam. When we come back from across the field towards the beam of the antenna, then I expected it'll pick up our quad or the signal much more quickly than it did. I expect this beam to be something like 70 degrees wide, whereas the other one was about 50, uh, 50 or 60 maybe. This will be 70, 75 degrees, maybe more. So we'll just see because this is a constant trade-off between the width of your beam and the amount of gain you get. So on a diversity headset with... Um, it doesn't really matter, you can use a really powerful antenna because you've still got your Omni, which will switch in when you're behind yourself or to the side, and that, that seven turn will give you maximum range. But you might just be wanting not, not to have to worry about where you point your head so much, or you might not have diversity on your goggles so or your visor, so in that case you want something that isn't going to be quite so directional. Anyway, enough talking from me. Oh, before I go on, um, I should mention, someone did say, oh look, that's got aluminium in it. No, it doesn't. And I should have mentioned yesterday, the tubing you use for this has to be non-conductive, has to be non-conductive or non-magnetic because if there was metal anywhere in here it would completely screw things up. For the, that's the reason we don't use for example a bolt through here, whoops, a bolt through here to hold the whole thing together because that would be, it would upset the tuning of our coil and we don't want that so plastic, plastic pipe is the best thing, wooden dowel it can have moisture in it which is not so good um, and if this, if this did have metal in this tube, then we wouldn't have got anything like the performance that we saw yesterday with the seven turn. So let's go ahead and test out the five turn now before the rain comes. Okay, let's see what the five element antenna works like. Here we go. Look, I'm out of the field. Um, you can see we've got the five element antenna up there and I'll put my five fingers up to show five elements. Right, let's see how it goes. I'll skip along to the relevant part of the video. Okay, now what we expect in this video is a, a bit less range than we had, a bit more noise at the end. See, we've still got very little in the way of multi-pathing because we still have a relatively tight beam with five turns, but yeah, still it's perfectly flyable here. We're out 200 metres, um, probably 300 metres coming up. And here we go. You see a bit of grain in the picture there, but it's still totally flyable. And here we go out past... 400 meter mark with only 25 milliwatts of power remember so here we go and as we turn we should get yeah get a bit of grain in the turn because um, the antenna changes a little bit on the quad and coming back now it'll be interesting to see how much multi-pathing we get from those hangers if any so this it's performing as we'd expect just a little bit less gain than the seven turn and and you know the interesting thing will be see no no real multi-pathing there so it's giving us great rejection of those um off beam signals and now we come back and see how we go behind now of course being directional we, we will get a loss of signal as we travel behind the antenna but it's much better than the seven uh, turn we've got a lot more signal behind the seven turn really was looking all out the front so you can see we've um, we've lost signal out front but we've gained a little bit in the back but it gets pretty unflyable as we move off to the side here I'm going to fly out over that paddock out of that field to get us an idea of the beam width so out over the paddock when I'm sort of right angles to the antenna, there's virtually no signal. You couldn't fly that at all. That's where your Omni would come in handy. Um, but I'm coming around now and I'll start heading back towards the runway. So we'll just see when the picture improves enough to be flyable. And it's not there yet. I wouldn't want to fly with that, but it's starting to improve. See when we get some colour. There we go. We're starting to get some colour back. And let's have a look there we go pretty much yeah that's we're back in the beam that's much better than the seven so it's got a much wider beam 
than the 7 turn. That's probably why 5 turn helicals are the most popular if you're going to use them on your goggles. They do have a wider beam than the 7. They're not as much gain, but you don't have to be so accurate with your head positioning. So there we go, coming in land, perfect landing of course, as I always do. And now we will try out the 3 turn. Right, so that was the 5 turn helical. Let's cut it back to 3 turns. You see I've got a hot glue mark on here. Let's cut it back to 3 turns and see how that performs when compared to the previous versions. Here we go, just it's a three turn helical, just over three turns of helical. Let's see how that goes. And let's take a look at the three turn again. You can see three turn helical, and I hold three fingers up to show you that it's three turns. So let's skip ahead to the flight. Here we go. Okay, still a good signal. You know, this is still better, way better than the omnidirectional because we're still flying down a beam. We've still got some gain. There's a little bit of waviness there due to multipathing. It's still totally acceptable. And the signal is getting a bit grainier even out here at the 250 meter mark, heading up for 300 meters. And you can see this is definitely hasn't got as much gain as the, as the five turn or the seven turn. We're getting snowy now, but it's still totally flyable at 400 meters. Turn around, we should lose signal again. Yep. Not too bad though, um, that colour change is just because of the crappy CMOS camera, don't worry about that. So let's fly back, what will be interesting to see again is how much multi-pathing we get as we come into the area where the signal is going to bounce off those hangers, there we get a bit more. See because the, the, um, the beam is probably wider we're getting a bit more reflection off those hangers, getting a bit more uh, flickering of the signal. We're flying behind, we should get further going behind it because now we've sort of sacrificed a bit of front gain for some back signal. There we go. See that's yeah, much better than the 7 and even better than the 5. And as I did before, see at the turning point here we're going to go out over the field. So yeah, the, the 3 turn gives us a, a much wider, well not so much wider beam I think as an all round pickup, but even, out of, even with the 3 turn we're basically unflyable out over that field. There's just not enough sensitivity out to the side of the antenna at right angles to it. But I'm going to, as before I'm going to fly across towards the beam again and we'll just see when that kicks in when we start getting, there's a bit of, no, going back to some noise, there's a little side lobe as we call it, which is just a tiny beam that's not really usable. So we're still flying in the muck. And here we go, there's that fence. So interesting, that's very interesting. That um, The beam on this actually seems a little bit narrower than the five element, or the five turn helical. We had to get a lot closer to the, the sort of, where the beam was pointing to actually get the signal. So this all further explains why I like five turn helicals on my goggles if I'm going to use them on goggles because they just, you know, the beam is actually in this case narrower. That could be down to a whole lot of things, but basically, you know, there's, I would rather fly the five element of all those turn setups that we had. And there we go, we're done. So there we go, what have we learned? Well, we've learned you can make a pretty damn good antenna for a few bucks if you just have a play around, put some time into it. I think you'll agree that of all the the seven, five, and three turn, I think the five turn is about the best compromise between gain and beam width and so forth. So yay, I'd make a five turn. But if you want to go the long distance, you can make it 11 turns if you want to, make it longer 11 turns. You get a law of diminishing returns as you go further and further. So five to seven is about the best for most applications. Now, um, I'm just, I had a thought the other day hmm, what about a high gain omnidirectional for FPV? And most people are going to say, but you told us you can't get a high gain omnidirectional because, as you'll see in a video I posted some time ago if you're a regular viewer, you only get so much energy coming out of an antenna or going into an antenna. And the way we get gain is just to shape the direction of that energy. It's like a balloon. You can squeeze it out really long into a beam and get gain in one direction, but you sacrifice because you're squeezing the gain out of the other areas. That's why we get nothing, very little behind the antenna here and very little at the sides because we've taken all that gain and stuck it out the front to get more in front of the antenna. So how can we get a high gain omnidirectional? Because it would seem to be stupid. If the signal is being received from all directions evenly, then you can't get any gain. In fact, an isotropic radiator, which is a, a totally a gain of, of unity, um, will receive the same signal strength from any direction. And that's the ideal for our transmitter antenna on our, on our aircraft and our drones because it means it doesn't matter which way the model is facing, you're getting the same intensity of signal strength. But for receivers, we, you know, we use gain because we can point it where the model is. So how can we possibly get a high gain omnidirectional? Well, um, Gary Mortimer from, uh, what is it, um, SUAS News asked me on a comment on the last video, do-it-yourself antenna, um, 
or he said, I think it was on that. He said he wanted a high gain antenna for 86, well, 868. A uh, high gain omnidirectional antenna for 868 megahertz. And I th that's what got me thinking, well, hey, yeah, I, we can do that. So I'm going to have a little bit of a play around today while nobody's looking, um, so you won't see. And I'm going to try and make myself a high gain omnidirectional antenna. And it won't defy the laws of physics, it won't break the rules, but it could be quite useful if you like flying medium distances away and not having to worry about having an array of antennas or an antenna tracker or anything like that. So stay tuned. The next couple of days we could see something very interesting on this channel. It might start a whole new interest in different types of antennas. So as I say, stay tuned. In the meantime, thank you for watching. Comments, questions, anything to say, stick them in the place provided by YouTube and I will now get on with getting on. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe. And thanks again to all my Patreon supporters who make all this kind of stuff possible. Bye for now.